how can I know? How can I know? How can I know if I am a part of the invisible church? How can I know if I am truly saved? And the answer, as it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. If you want a telltale sign of one who is truly saved, look at their heart and find one with confidence firm until the end, like verse 14. Or find a hardened heart, and that will be a clear and evident sign of one who has no saving faith. So you might ask, well, how can I see a hardened heart? Well, first of all, it's not something that just shows up out of nowhere. It's a process with symptoms along the way. It's much more like a sickness. You don't just wake up without a leg one day, right? Gangrene spreads slowly. It darkens the skin, changes the temperature of the area. Numbness and pain ensues. And then comes the dreaded announcement from the doctor, I'm going to have to take the leg. It's a process that unfolds, but not without warning. Charles Spurgeon, he once wisely pointed out, you must understand that the hardening, hardening of a tender conscience is a gradual process, something like the covering of a pond with ice on a frosty night. At first, you can scarcely see that freezing is going on at all. Apostates and great backsliders do not reach their worst at one bound. The descent to hell is sometimes a precipice, but far more often a smooth and gentle slope. It were hard to find out in the worst of men exactly when they were utterly given up to judicial blindness. It is often a long and laborious process by which conscience is completely seared. Now, experientially, we can all relate to this reality, can't we? We, we look back in the rearview mirror to set our eyes on a day in the past where that initial spark of our rebirth had faded. Have you ever asked yourself the question, I don't love the Lord like I used to. At least I don't feel that way. It doesn't matter how you feel. You see, we, we, we can see in the past that where our fear and anxiety over particular sins seems to have subsided. We acknowledge that we don't pray and study or read with fervor like we used to. And as prayer and devotion have given way to business and to recreation, we convince ourselves that this is just part of the season of life that I am in. And when you miss the Lord's Day gathering of the saints, do you feel a significant loss? When you miss the covenantal remembrance of all that is ours in the gospel with the feast of the bread and the wine, do you, do, do you, do you remain hungry and thirsty for it? You see, all of this, brothers and sisters, is a part of callous formation on our hearts. And you cannot step in this building one step without looking somebody in the face and watching them cry out, I am guilty of that very thing. Even as I look at you right now, you could say that with loud proclamation to me. There's hardness even in my heart. You see, living in a sinful world among sinful people tends to have a hardening effect on an individual 